of our conversations on urbanization. As you know, uh, we began in February 2014, and we've had uh, uh, six occasions where, after a brief presentation by the speaker, who is an eminent uh, uh, person in the field, where they not only have academic knowledge of the specific urban challenge that they are addressing, but they've soiled their hands with trying out different things. And uh, we've had a number of people, uh, including the last two being Professor Gosain, who is here, who's from IIT, and he talked to us uh, about the larger water issues uh, of uh, the uh, capital region, and the latest was Dr. Sunita Narayan, who talked about air quality. And today, uh, um, uh, Mr. Sono, we actually make a break with our tradition. After six Indian speakers, we've become ambitious, and we've decided that we will reach out to global best practices and expose our membership to what is happening in the best cities of the world. And we can then ask you questions. And some of our questions would be uh, perhaps very naive, but I hope that you will bear with us because we are barely getting used to uh, understanding the concept of environmental and financial sustainability of the process of urbanization. Mr. Sono has been with the Kyushu Asian Center for Asian Low Carbon Society for the last five years. Uh, Kitakyushu City is an industrial city and has grown to be a leading environment friendly city. This city <coughs> endeavors to brand itself as world capital for sustainable development and a technology capital of Asia. <clears throat> Since 1980, it has accepted many <coughs> trainings from Asian countries and also sent city staff to Asian countries. Uh, at present, the city of Kitakyushu is promoting the concept of green growth of Asia. Uh, in fact, these activities of the city have received wide-ranging international recognition. In July 2011, Kitakyushu was selected as a green growth model city by the OECD, the first city in Asia in which economic growth and environmental policies complement one another. Mr. Junichi Sono has been the focal point of technology transfer services to Asian countries with regard to solid waste and waste management policy in general, including hazardous wastes such as CBPOPs. Kitakyushu is one of five cities in Japan where the most advanced PCB destruction plant is located. This city is also the first place of designated 26 eco towns by the government of Japan and it's the only one that can export these policies to Asian countries such as China, Indonesia, India, Thailand, Philippines, and others. And with these few lines, let me invite Mr. Junichi Sono to make a presentation. I would request you to uh, keep your presentation to no more than 20 minutes, so you give us opportunity to pick your brains in the uh, second uh, half. Thank you.
Okay, thank you very much, uh, the, uh, for the, all these things guests. I'm very honored uh, to have the uh, presentation uh, here. So, uh, uh, the, on behalf of the Kitaki issue, I would like to express the, uh, the uh, gratitude to all attendees. Okay. So, the, uh, the, I really uh, present very uh, compactly <laughs> in 20 minutes. I tried that. Okay, today the theme is a uh, uh, brand new steel tattoo shoe. Okay. So the first, the okay, first I'd like to the, uh, the show you the steel profile. Uh, okay, this is Japan, the Tokyo and the Osaka. The, this is a tattoo shoe. 500 km from the Osaka, 1000 uh, km from the Tokyo. And the same distance uh, the, we, to the, uh, the Tokyo is the, is the Shanghai. Then, that's why they're very close to the Asian countries. So the, we have been the, uh, the quarantine uh, training uh, place to Asian country from long time ago. Actually, uh, for example, the uh, from Japan to the India is a 5,000 km. Then this is a uh, steel profile as well. The Kitaki shoe the still consists of seven words. Uh, the merger in the, uh, the, you know, from the five cities in 1963. This is the history of the, uh, uh, the you know, the steel rose. In 1901, the, uh, the very biggest uh, used to be a biggest uh, steel plant called the uh, Nippon, uh, Nippon Steel Corporation that is uh, starting in the, our city. And then, you know, the, this is a total, uh, this is sanitary, the, uh, the, you know, equipment. Uh, the, they have the factory in the uh, Gujarat. And also, this is the Yaskawa. Yaskawa is also the, uh, you know, uh, our Factory in the Bangalore, they are producing the industrial robot. So this very uh, the famous co uh, country, uh, company, the headquarters is in Kyushu City. So this is also the Kyushu City, and uh, you know we have the, uh, the very famous for the industry, but uh, we have the uh, very beautiful uh, nature, like the and then they are very rare and scar uh, scarcity animal. Fish and insect is to be living. This is uh, uh, the picture of the uh, 1901 starting the steel plant in start up the Kyushu. And then the other one is 1950. You know, the starting the uh, this kind of the, you know, industry and the heavy industry integrated to the, our city. And this is a very good for the, uh, the you know, prosperity of the economy, but the also we suffered a lot of the serious pollution. This is uh, uh, the before and after. Uh, the, this is a picture in the 1960s. There are lots of the smog and uh, you know the uh, the bay. The, this is called the Dokai Bay, but the, at the time people called the Sea of Death. Then after that. You know, the, we had the lots of the, uh, the you know, uh, the effort among the uh, the partnership among the residents and the company and local government, and then finally overcame the pollution. And then now, this is uh, uh, the you know the picture. We got the you know uh, you know blue sky and blue water. This is a uh, the issue the you know. Uh, chronological table our environment policy from 1901 to the, uh, the now. So from 1901 we started the industrialization. Then in 1960 to 1980, uh, then this is uh, you know period uh, of uh, pollution control policy. And then this one is an uh, the you know 1980 to. The 2002 local diplomacy policy and the resource satellite, uh, satellite policy. And then, you know, 2002 uh, towards sustainable society policy. 
in the year 2008, uh, local society policy. This is the uh, flow of the, you know, uh, the, our policy. So next is uh, uh, the urban planning of Kita Kyushu City. This is a trend of urban structure and the environment. I think that, you know, everybody, uh, every country is the same. I think first, you know, the concentrate to the center area, you know, and then they expand to the suburb area. After that, what happened? You know, they declined the you know, population in old urban area, and then also the, you know, expanding to the uh, suburb area. That means the natural resource in suburb area are destroyed. So follow out of the commercial industries, and that you know affected decline the vitality and you know energy in central urban areas. So you know the five also the you know uh, typical problem. There are lots of the factory close to the you know residence area in your city, but downsizing their scale and the area of idle land is increasing. This is a, a trend of the urban structure environment at the time in Japan. Uh, in Kitakyushu. Then, how we think, you know, we try to back and develop in town area. So this is the basic policy of the urban master planning. Okay? So there are a lot of stock remain in town area, like uh, uh, you know, commercial facility, the hospital, road, and public spaces. So we think that we better use these stocks if this is a compactly and then try to realize high quality life. You know, and the last one is also a very important part. Leadership is not only by the administration part, like the government, but you know, various players should be involved, like you know, like the citizen and the company. Now this is a, uh, the, our state of public transportation network. Here was the railway. Railway is the main uh, the transportation major, and also the, uh, the city bus is uh, the lots of driving. So this is a zoning of uh, our city. There is a red one is uh, the city center. The blue one is a uh, water from the city area, and the green one is uh, you know natural and the rural zone like that. The orange is the route of the car and the people's in and out. Then uh, I can show you the three cases of town development according to the character point of the location. Okay. First one is a popular city center, this one. Lots of stocks are uh, integrated this area. Therefore, we are trying to, uh, you know, develop this area more, you know, convenient, more energetic, more safety, and then comfortable. But should be small and compact. Then more people come in there, you know, and then creating economic growth. This is the concept of the, you know, center area. So. Before, uh, the, before the monorail, this is a monorail, is not connecting to the central railway station. Uh, we cannot uh, we connect we connect monorail to the central station and then improve the transfer efficiency and conveniency. Then more people come to the city center. This is also a big river, it's, uh, you know, from the center of the city, but you know before so polluted and very bad odor. So then, uh, you know, we developed riverside and here, and then people uh, walk riverside uh, comfortably and feel relaxation. This area is, uh, you know, reversed as a simple place of our city. This is also a commercial facility. Before, the, you know, small uh, commercial shop existed. Then we built, you know, comprehensive uh, commercial complex and small shops, and then and then small shops are transferred to it. So people are very convenient because they shouldn't walk longer way to buy various goods. 
this is also the uh, you know the, the city center. So uh, when people move back to the city center, uh, if they come by car and they make traffic jam, it doesn't make sense, right? So we recommend people to you know come center by public transportation or bicycle. So that's why because before the yeah, after we make bicycle lane in pavement. So this is also the uh, the you know rent, uh, rental bike uh, you know uh, center. So for those who can buy public transportation, we start rental bicycle service and promote to use inside this area. I mean the city center. And then, but uh, you know, <clears throat> unfortunately, there's still most of the people come by car. Even the case. We strongly promote the next generation car like electric vehicle and fuel cell vehicle. We are setting up the fuel station for those cars inside city. So uh, as I mentioned, the uh, Riverside area is a new symbol area in Kitakyushu. So we also uh, set up the renewable energy facility and eco-friendly equipment like a PV, wind power, EV, LED, and then and then integrated to this area and promote as a more symbolic place for the citizen. Okay, this is a you know. Okay, even if hardware is well developed, so software is not interested in that. It doesn't make sense. So and then I mentioned various players should be involved, like a citizen in the company, to the you know making the uh, the you know urban area. So we promote a lot of the event for the company and the citizen to participate in, and then increasing the you know motivation of them. Then this is a you know public awareness late uh, late. We uh, we set up a lot of event. Next is a uh, new town project in Higashida area. Higashida area is uh, used to be a factory integrated area of the Steel Corporation, but they downsizing then the activities and then you know there are a lot of the uh, idle land in this area. So we promote this area to be simply community among factory, commercial office and the resident. This is called that you should smart community project. So we made a railway station in that area, you know, to make the you know company a community in the town. This is a picture of the new station and the new developed area. So this is the energy system of the, this area. We do not depend on the large, you know, energy grid system from the big central integrated power generation system. We are promoting local independent independent power system. You know, you, you remember that, uh, like you know, Fukushima disaster. The one central integrated power generation system is damaged. All people cannot get electricity. Not to you know repeat it again. We are promoting local independent power system. This is also the Kitakishu Smart Community de uh, detail. Energy in this area is connected to IT grid and then controlled by the Smart Community Center and try to realize best generation and use of you know limited energy. Smart meters have been installed in each household and office in that area. So, which allow the ordinary people to think for themselves and take part in self-direct demand management. We call them prosumer, you know, that means the producer and the consumer. Uh, the next is the uh, Hibikinada area. This is a reclaimed land and a recycled facility integrated area. So this is a, a, a 
Kita Kyushu Eco Town. So the Kita Kyushu Eco Town is uh, you know uh, the the recycling factory complex. So the Kita Kyushu Eco Town is the first and the largest eco town in Japan. At this moment, 29 project is operating as a big space, like the electric home appliance recycling, automobile recycling, fluorescence lamp recycling, uh, plastic PET bottle recycling, and that. The last one is uh, you know developing around the station area. So there, uh, there used to be a freight train staying, uh, station and uh, all the factory, but after business downsizing, uh, there are lots of idle land and buildings, so we renovate. So this is a near the Moji station area. So very convenient, and uh, you know there are lots of the historical building. So how we renovate? We re renovate uh, them, the museum, and uh, nice you know restaurant, something like that. This is also the Jinno uh, Haru station area. So uh, then we uh, developed railway station and then uh, developed the community. So then a new uh, the, we made a new place. So uh, the, after the uh, the factory and the railway station is showing and the, you know the idle land. So. This is, a, I think, uh, the, uh, what uh, is uh, our, you know, uh, the urban uh, plan in Kitakyushu city. So, the last comment uh, from the city of Kitakyushu to uh, Indian people. So, I think infrastructure should be used for the long time period. So, therefore, how to plan and what technology use is very important, I think. So, you know, like a Taj Mahal in India, it is still remaining a symbolic building in India. You know, that art, architect technology was the highest at, the, at that era. So that's why please do not accept cheap technology. In, infrastructure should use highest technology in that era. So then we have to succeed them to the next generation. Thank you very much. Um, before I open uh, this for discussion, I had one question on which I'd like your comments. Uh, the infrastructure development for the city was uh, principally through government funding, or did you have public-private partnership? Uh, I think. Uh, uh, the half and the half. Mm -hmm. So the you know planning itself, the the you know uh, the done uh, conducted by the government, and uh, and also the uh, national uh, central government support that kind of the you know uh, the, uh, the project. So that's why the, they give us the some subsidy. Yes. The half. I think they usually have. The half is, uh, you know, uh, the PPP. Yeah. It is, uh, you know, the cooperation with the, uh, the private company. Mm -hmm. And they join. And, they and, and, and the second question, which we are grappling with a great deal here, is that, is it really uh, the city government's responsibility <coughs> to implement these infrastructure projects uh, by bringing in the private sector and maybe the government of Japan gives some viability gap funding, etc. But even to run these high-tech systems, the operation and maintenance costs are very high. So how do you ensure financial receive so many awards that it's environmentally sustainable? But could we say that this is high tech but high price tag solution for a rich country like Japan, how do we adapt it to a country in which cities are financially broke 
And even if the government of India comes up with some viability gap funding, there will be a lot of handholding needed in order for our cities to adopt. And after you answer this question, I'll let the rest of the members ask questions. I couldn't help giving you the context of where we are compared to where, where you are. Yeah, this is a uh, yeah, good question, very really difficult to answer. Yes, but uh, in our area, so the, how we can make it uh, sustainable? This is, I uh, think, uh, uh, if the project is uh, depending, you know, asking the subsidize so, uh, you know, uh, the, so much, if not uh, the sustainable, I think. If we make it sustainable, we have to make the business that project. This is a very important. Otherwise, it cannot last long. That's why uh, the you know the in the this the uh, the project we so uh, they make if we, we make so uh, much effort to uh, the bring the people getting the in that area and then start the business we uh, the, we work a lot then otherwise the. And they also the, uh, the if some competition and the, <coughs> the comp some competition of the uh, business model, the business uh, you know business model is uh, I think a good idea. If uh, the if product are announced the that area and uh, the ask a lot of the, uh, the participants the enter in that area, and then we uh, the uh, we try. Uh, we hold a uh, business plan contest, and if that uh, if good idea uh, was selected, then we can have some money, and then this is just initial cost. But if that plan is good, and you know, then that is uh, uh, the, I think operating very good. So anyway, uh, I think uh, uh, the how to uh, the how how long, how how it. Sustainable is uh, uh, dependent on how to make the good business over there. Thank you. May I ask you to raise your hand and introduce yourself before asking the question, please. My, my name is Kamal Bhattu from Mahakur Restaurant Centre. And follow up to Dr. Arubadia's question, I noticed that you have natural gas or switch converted to gas, and then you have a hydrogen tank, and then you have fuel cells. Now, I would like to get some more details from you on how you're producing energy uh, using this particular system, because it has an application in India where we have 780 million cows, and each cow produces about one cubic meter of gas every day, which means 780 million cubic meters of gas production all over the country, not, not uh, localized in any particular city, which could be used for energy production close to something like six gigawatts. How? Because roughly about 100 cows give you 30 kilowatts of electricity. And uh, so you can calculate the amount of uh, gigawatts we can get. And we can use this as possible storage in sort of uh, batteries, we could use gas storage for night use, and during the daytime we produce electricity from photovoltaic or wind, and at night, which is expensive to have uh, battery backups for photovoltaic, we could use these gas tanks uh, in India called gobar gas or cow dung gas, cow gas tanks uh, for storage and to fuel cells. Questions are, how do you, have you found these fuel cells to be a lot more expensive than normal generators? I believe that my guess says that they're about one and a half times more than diesel generators, but I may be wrong. 
Secondly, what has been your experience with these reformers uh, to get the hydrogen out of the natural gas and fuel cells? And is there a large production of these fuel cell generators in Japan? And what is the source for getting such fuel cells? Because I'm curious as to why we have not used our cows as storage, or production of gas for storage uh, for villages, where then you can have a disconnected uh, grid. You can have micro grids and have uh, fairly cheap electricity production. So it's a long question, but it's on technology, again, uh, applicable or applied to India, to rural India, does it work? Would it work? Suppose you had to do it here, would you recommend such a system? Okay. Very much <laughs> difficult question. <laughs> I think that, okay, for, uh, for example, the, uh, the energy system there, uh, do you know that Japan doesn't have the enough uh, the, you know, the resource itself? Uh, because uh, we own uh, most of the fuel and the uh, fuel uh, we imported from the you know uh, the Middle East and Asian countries. So that's why the we uh, the, how we can uh, the save and uh, maybe uh, use it efficiency is very important issue of uh, for us. Then. For example, the, uh, the, the coal, uh, the uh, coal fuel, uh, the, uh, gen uh, the electric generation. So high efficiency. Com uh, I'm not sure the, I forgot the name of that, but the, uh, the some company the, the developed the high efficiency combined uh, the electric generation system. So that's like Mitsubishi or Hitachi, and then that is a very uh, the popular in Japan, and uh, and uh, that is that mean is uh, uh, the generation efficiency means uh, the the cost itself is very low, low make it lower. So that's why that we uh, the we Japan the uh, set such a, developing such a highest. Uh, high, high technology for the uh, the energy uh, the generation. So then try to make it uh, the you know a little bit uh, cheaper uh, compared to the other uh, the you know, system of the uh, electricity uh, the generation. So and then also the uh, fuel cell uh, itself. Uh, this is just uh, starting the fuel cell. Uh, the System and marketing, marketing just starting. So that's why the fuel cell is not so popular uh, at this moment in Japan. But the the Toyota and the, you know other uh, the company are uh, trying to the uh, selling the uh, fuel cell people. So then they are planning to spend a lot of the, uh, the money for the setting the uh, fuel cell. Uh, the, Station and also that technology is the uh, the shifting to the uh, the you know house uh, the, uh, the house and home and the apartment and uh, that's why the uh, this moment uh, we cannot uh, the tell the how we are uh, the getting out how we uh, use uh, fuel cell so often but. Uh, I think it's just starting the fuel cell, uh, but the, I think the future is in the future. This uh, fuel cell system uh, will be uh, more popular. I think. Okay, using it to. Uh, yeah, this is a this is a actually that this is a kind of pilot uh, area. So and then also the hydrogen itself. Uh, the this is a byproduct of the, the steel plant. So steel plant, when steel plant make up uh, the, uh, the coax, so there are lots of the hydrogen generate as uh, the, uh, the 
byproduct, then they don't use that. They waste that. That's why the, we make the pipeline from the factory to the town and put in the fuel cell and then make uh, uh, the, you know, electricity. This is a kind of the, uh, the pilot project now, but uh, it is very good. Thank you. Uh, yes, Professor Gosai. Uh, thank you. Uh, I my question is basically when you look at the city which was uh, around 100 years ago, uh, ago when you started uh, ruining every system and the industrialization started and when you look at now how much you have been able to revive the biodiversity and the environment you have shown some of the very beautiful species which are there have those species been also revived in the process of restructuring your uh, total uh, low carbon city or redesigning the city. I have seen uh, a beautiful uh, river going through the city and it's all concretized, it's all channelized. The, it has lost the, the initial status which was there uh, 100 years ago. So what is the extent of, because all this is human centric. So how much you have been able to revive the environment, this is the true challenge. Uh, has, has that been studied in uh, this particular city's case? That how much, how many species have been uh, regained or re uh, rehabilitated? How many species? Yes. The animal you mean? Yeah. Uh, have you done that or uh, not? At least, uh, has there been an attempt to really bring back those species? Mm -hmm. the, the, the waterborne, uh, the fishes you have shown, mm -hmm. some of them. Have they come back after the revival of your, uh, these plants? Whatever you have done in the city over the last 15, 20 years. Has that happened or everything is lost and then you are saying now that we have uh, uh, brought the low carbon strategy. But that is all human centric. Uh, it is all looking after the interests of the thing. Okay, uh, the biodiversity, yes. So uh, the before, uh, the, uh, as I said, as you said, the, we uh, developed a lot of the industrial uh, the factor and then uh, we uh, destroy the, uh, the nature. And then a lot of species is, uh, I think, uh, someone died, someone uh, moving to other places. Then we, uh, the, uh, we change, the, uh, we try to recover the, uh, the nature. And then 20 years, we our the effort, uh, the beautiful uh, the ocean, beautiful water is coming back. That, and after coming back, and then a lot of species is also coming back to the ocean. So then we are still keeping the, uh, the situation there. So I can't. No, 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 no. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 I just wanted to hear this from you. <laughs> we wanted to hear this from you. Okay. Whether, yeah. So then we, we never want to uh, the, you know, break again. That's why. Uh, we have to, uh, you know, the, uh, try to uh, make the, uh, the environment education and uh, to the, uh, the kids and also the, uh, to the you know, adult how uh, we uh, how we spend uh, money and year to the, to uh, you know return the, uh, the beautiful scenery, beautiful uh, nature. So that's why we uh, try to uh, password, password a lot uh, the people never do it again. Then we can keep that biodiversity now. Thank you. There, there is a question there. I'll take two or three questions now and then. Yeah, you mentioned smart grids uh, and smart meters. What are those? And uh, have you entered into carbon market also? Yeah, through carbon know. credits, have yeah, you answered? Uh, carbon credit. Uh, the, this one is not, uh, the, uh, we didn't do that yet. Okay. And what are smart meters? And second question is how you go about uh, motivating people for the conservation of electricity and water? Uh, like in India, we see a lot of sensitization is required uh, for people to motivate them to reduce uh, electricity wastage and water wastage. So, how do you move on to environmental education? Yeah. How do you move on to environmental education? Yeah. 
how do you go about educating people on the importance of conserving water and electricity? Or Japanese people are self-disciplined already. Yes, yes, but uh, yeah. yeah, I don't want to say that. Uh, uh, it's, uh, we Japanese people like uh, saving everything. Because, uh, because uh, 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 you know, the resources are very limited from Japan. Then from long time ago, we are uh, the Saving is uh, very uh, good uh, things, we believe. But, but uh, yeah, it's very difficult. Anyway, but uh, I think uh, the anyway try to uh, the education, education and uh, the public awareness. That is a very important thing. The base, every to the, these are based on the, uh, the you know, city planning and everything. So because of, uh, the we call the citizens of power, citizens of power to lift up the society. That's why I think they try to make it again, again, again. There is a question. Will you introduce yourself? Yeah, Kone Cheva, first of all. Uh, Mahindra City, National Institute of Urban Affairs. Uh, I would like to rather contextualize this case more towards the Indian situation. Uh, first of all, it's more about the case itself. Uh, for instance, a case like Kitakyushu may be more relevant to some of the industrial towns of India, like Surat, Bhilai. But as we know, in case of India, most of the cities a service oriented. So whether a case probably from Yokohama or Kyoto would be rather relevant in comparison to probably you know, Osaka or Nagoya or Kitakishu. Why I am saying that is it also not just because you know I I have stayed a sufficient time there in Japan and uh, understood how uh, low carbon city may be relevant in, uh, in, in you know, uh, also from the point of view of user behavior as well as internalizing it into the governance system. Uh, why? Because, you know, probably in Japan, uh, though the urban system works more on the market and the collaboration between the government and the enterprises, in India, the situation is quite different. We still work with a lot of regulatory mechanisms, with a lot of top to bottom approach, where the urban local bodies rather depend on not just technology, but also to initiate making changes at the local level. So, first of all, whether you know it's about the appropriateness of the case itself while you uh, <coughs> why we could apply it to the Indian context and about you know why by because we want to internalize it into our own system the way we <coughs> manage our cities um, so no, the, the first question is that many of our cities are really service-based cities and not industrial towns. And this is really more relevant for industrial towns. Uh, yeah. And the second is that, the in fact, that's a very good question, a very appropriate question, that the governance systems that we have are very I mean, very specific and kind of rooted to our federal setup with overlapping responsibilities and all kinds of things. So, does that not, am I saying it right? right? right. Does that not come in the way of having these solutions which are rational 
and then with the help of technology can be translated into practice because it's as much about institutions as it is about technology. It's as much about accountability as it is about the appropriate choice of uh, uh, you know, PPP or, or government uh, investment. So this question is, can you comment on the relevance of this to the Indian situation, especially since you are familiar with the Indian case. I mean, you, you know, you've been involved with the DMIC, so maybe you're involved with the cutting edge of where we are going. But the 8,000 cities that we have, have a, a mixed, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 set of you know, agendas. So how is this relevant? Okay, first question, I think. Okay, uh, the, you know, the, actually the Takeshi city is an industrial city. So that's why the, this small community is uh, uh, the actually we call the, uh, the, uh, the living uh, the close to the factory model. So that's why energy itself, uh, the fuel itself, uh, the, uh, we receive the, uh, the, uh, let's say the factory the, in like a, uh, the hydrogen and also the energy uh, from the factory. Factory uh, has a, a cogeneration system, cogeneration system, and they use just uh, steam and uh, heat, but they don't use uh, electricity. That's why we receive the town receive the electricity. That is uh, uh, the, our uh, characteristic point of the uh, smile steam. The theme is uh, uh, coexistent uh, symbiosis uh, between the factory and the energy. Uh, uh, so that's why the, it, it, this case is, our smart community is uh, uh, suit to the industrial uh, town, industrial city. But uh, as I said, the, uh, the you know, commercial base is not uh, uh, suitable uh, of our case. But uh, in Japan, there are four uh, the smart city is designated by the, uh, the central government. Three years, uh, for example, Yokohama. Yokohama is a commercial base, smart community. That's why the, for the uh, commercial base, uh, commercial city, people uh, they try to the, you know, see uh, the how the Yokohama city is doing. This is a, it's kind of the, uh, one question. And then the other one is, uh, yeah, this is very difficult. Uh, the, in India, it's very big, and then there are lots of the uh, the, uh, the people living, and then, <laughs> and then uh, the level is uh, also uh, uh, the wide range. That's why the, what kind, what kind of the uh, the society, what kind of the uh, Smart city is the best. Is uh, for the all people. Uh, I think it will be different, uh, diff difficult, and different situation uh, from the Japanese situation. <coughs> and also, the uh, in my opinion, the, the government is very strong, and the government do the and the, uh, the local government upset. Can we have a definition from you of smart city? Definition of smart city. Just try. It's a good, good exercise. <laughs> okay. <laughs> smart community. So. Okay. Uh, the, uh, the people are uh, people you know, living uh, safety. Uh, the comfortably. And then also the, uh, the, the, the energy and the water and then uh, the other service uh, very conveniently, but the efficiency, efficiency, and then uh, the, yeah, 
that kind of the speed is called I, I, I think smart or city. That's an efficient city then. Yeah, well, efficient is uh, uh, the for the saving the money and uh, saving the resources mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, do not waste anything. This is a feasible, uh, thing, I think. Please. I have this recommend. We have a group in it. Uh, I, I, I'm starting with it. it. I'm coming in, I'm uh, I'll give you one incident. One of the high court judges who lives in Routine's Delhi, there was heavy rain and his bungalow got flooded along with others. He so moved to took an action and called <coughs> in the meeting, I mean, sorry, called in the hearing. He called all the agencies. And every agency was trying to prove that, no, sir, I'm not responsible for this flooding of your house. This other guy is responsible. So finally, for after six months, he didn't know what to do. So nobody is responsible for flooding in Lutian zone, Bangalore. So I don't know what will happen to other cities. So solution. The problem is there is something called 73rd or 75th Amendment <coughs> of the Constitution. It gives divorce powers to the local body. It's actually which, 74th. Yes, yeah, sorry, so <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't remember, right? Yeah. So which has not happened till now. So if there is a city, you cannot pinpoint, okay, this guy is a chief and buck stops here at his table. No, it is not there. Nobody knows who is responsible for what is happening in the city and local body. So first, <coughs> that needs to be done. Maybe say the mayor or somebody, you know, the CEO is of the city is responsible. He he is responsible for everything what goes wrong. You know, he he, he gets hold of somebody. You know, that is important. Yeah. We need to do that first, then go smart. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Yes. You, you can give. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. My name is Arpan Dabey. I am an urban planner. I work for the government. I have two questions, very brief and direct. First is that in the process of cleaning the city and making it more sustainable, was any industrial relocation required to move industries out of the city? If that was required, how difficult or how easy it was to convince the industrialists? Were they given any incentives to relocate themselves? Second question is about heritage. As I understand, it is a combination of five cities, the Kitaki issue, and uh, is there any component of built heritage in those cities? Because in India, we are facing a problem very uh, environment is one component, uh, infrastructure is second component, and in some of, some of the cities of India which are quite old in terms of their buildings, for example, Varanasi. The built heritage, we are losing it when we want to protect the environment, we lose the built heritage. When we want to develop infrastructure, we would lose the heritage again. And maintaining three of them at the same time is difficult for us in some cases. Most Kitaki is facing a problem of heritage, so two questions. First question is the how to... How was there any industrial <coughs> relocation required? For example, if the city of Delhi and in China, for cleaning the city of Delhi, and the industries were relocated from the city core to the outsides. I believe some incentives were also given to the industry for relocation. Because what we have seen in the presentation is more of the redevelopment and urban land readjustment and the provision of, urban, of uh, public transport in the urban areas. But the key polluting factor in any port city, I believe, as we saw, it's a port city, is the industries. The smoke which is generated from the industries, which pollutes the water, it pollutes the soil and, and the, to the air. So until we relocate the industries from the cities to the outside, okay, I think we cannot meet the problem of pollution in totality. So was such a relocation involved in the, in the case of the Kitupia? So, uh, okay, uh, the, you said the Darian, you know, Chinese case. So that's right. Uh, Darian, the, we cooperate with the uh, Darian environment for uh, plant. Then finally, they are uh, they moving to other area. The factory is moving to the other area. But uh, still, the Kyushu, yes, uh, they, of course, some are uh, they're moving. But uh, mostly are uh, uh, not moving. Then improving its, you know, itself in the same, uh, same location. Is it okay? Yes. yes. No, then the other one is. Uh, uh, the, how do they keep the uh, heritage? No, did you have to give them incentives to improve uh, uh, environmentally if they were not relocated but where they are mm -hmm. in order to adopt these environment friendly policies? Was there some subsidy involved or some incentives involved? 
Yes, uh, the, okay. So, if they, uh, we didn't, okay, uh, the, if they want to make, uh, the, uh, the, new, uh, new place, the, going to the other place, we, we give them some money. Yeah, that's right. Uh, the, some incentive. But, uh, they don't want to, uh, move to other place. Because uh, they have the factory surf here, and uh, they have the uh, that location is very good. That's why they built the factory over there. So that's why they, they stay, want to stay there, there, and they try to improve the, you know, uh, the improving the maybe it par, uh, the balance uh, between the uh, the environment, uh, environment conservation and the, also uh, the economic development. And the question on heritage. Heritage. Was that a challenge? Uh, heritage is that India has, India has a lot of world heritage or something like that. You mean? Built heritage. Old buildings, monuments, sometimes residential buildings also. Uh -huh. okay. But they are part of the built heritage. Yes. Okay. So, uh, the, okay. We did not break that. Of course, nobody broke that. Right? Okay. So, we use that as uh, a heritage, uh, for example, that in 1901, the first Japanese uh, the modern blast furnace is settled in their, our city. Then this is uh, the kind of the, you know, the symbolic mon monument of the, our city. Then we uh, develop that area is a kind of the uh, social uh, inspection area and then uh, lots of the, uh, the elementary school student is come to the uh, place and then we learn historically and also the environment uh, the you know uh, the education we uh, learn so that this is one of the, uh, the you know uh, example okay i still see hand this will be the last installment yeah i'm abhijit Banerjee from giz uh, my question is related to the previous couple of questions and also the first question by Dr. Almaria. Uh, again, going back to the difference between the Indian context and the Japanese context. You know, Japan, Japan is a so-called post-industrial country with uh, declining populations. And India is quite the opposite. And perhaps the biggest challenge in Indian cities is uh, informal settlements, which sometimes are referred to as slums. And you know, millions of people get added to these slums where there is no adequate services and it's very difficult to achieve anything there. So, uh, being a Japanese expert, I heard in the introduction that you advise uh, Asian cities, developing Asian cities like Philippines, Thailand, China. So, what would be your you know take? Because that is uh, you're coming from a very different context, and this is perhaps the biggest challenge in developing Asian cities: these informal settlements. So, would you, what kind of advice do you, or what kind of approaches do you, or do you have anything to add to that problem? Okay, I think uh, yeah, yeah, so we need uh, yeah, small community and you know, echo town is uh, looks nice and sounds nice. So, but I think most important part is basic infrastructure, like uh, you know, water, sewage, and the road, and once heavy rain, the flood, you know, that is a you know, very weak infra infrastructure and then, uh, the government control. So that's why I think, first of all, uh, the, I think they recommend to uh, the set the you know, basic inf infrastructure first, I think. Is it okay? Thank you. Yes. yes. There's a question here somewhere. Um, hi, I'm Swati. I'm from yes Bank. My question is really short. Uh, was land pooling and readjustment used to finance development in this project? And if so, to what extent? Because I feel that can really bridge the uh, finance gap that we have. Thank you. The land pooling and the land readjustment model that you have uh, was that used to unlock the land value and finance infrastructure? Did you 
when you land pool, did you tax some of the appreciation in value that occurred and used it for infrastructure development? <laughs> Would someone else try to? <laughs> the value of land, which became yeah. huge, huge yeah. after, was that taxed? Or how the uh, incentive from that? Or was development the, charge or something? Something was oh. generalized uh, for development of the city. That's the basic thing. Basically, it's uh, related to land valuation. But the incentives of 